All right, so with this question, there will be more questions on the next slide, okay? So it says, well, let me just quickly show you what other questions you have. So we have uh, these ones here, and then these ones, and then these ones. Okay, so it says the simplified diagram below represents an electrochemical cell used for the electrolysis of concentrated, that word might be important. Remember, we've spoken about uh, concentrated and dilute when they use those words and what that means. Okay, it might not come up, but just look out for that. Um, used for the electrolysis of concentrated sodium chloride solution. Um, okay, so because they're not using, remember I've spoken to you guys about this, you get, um, you get for example, aqueous, and then you get molten. And when we said it was molten, then there's no water. But when it's aqueous, then we are using water. So there is also water inside here. I'm not sure if that's gonna become a factor, but just remember that, okay? So water is also there. So this question says, define the term electrolysis. Well, I'll give you the definition now, but electrolysis is when you use um, electricity to be able to do some type of chemical change. Okay, so the correct definition, well, there was a few, but one of them was, it is the use electrical energy to produce a chemical change. This one says that chlorine gas is released at electrode X. Okay, electrode X is chlorine gas being given off. Chlorine is a diatomic molecule. Oh, they did tell us it's CO2. Okay, um, write down the letter X or Y where oxidation takes place. Okay, so we know that um, oxidation always takes place at an anode. That is whether we are looking at a galvanic cell or, I mean, sorry, a galvanic cell, which is not this one, or this one, which is electrolytic. So galvanic or electrolytic oxidation means anode. And then reduction is um, where you have your cathode. Okay, so let's think about this. If you look at NaCl, we know that that is actually Na plus and Cl minus. Okay, now they tell us that the Cl minus got um, oxidized or reduced over here. Okay, at this electrode over here. So we converted Cl minus to Cl2. So let's go get our table now. And so what we have is we have Cl minus being converted into Cl2. So you need to know that when a reaction goes that way, where you've got electrons on the left hand side like that, that is oxidation. That is oxidation. And so um, if we can see there's oxidation, now, now they said letter X or Y, of the electrode where oxidation takes place. Well, this is oxidation, so you can just say X. Now it says, what is the half reaction that takes place at electrode Y? Okay, so now we gotta be careful because of the water. So I have explained this to you guys before where we have the electrolysis where there's water presence, electrolysis of aqueous solutions. And so what we do is we look at this Na+, now where is that on the table? Well, there it is there. Okay, so that means we are on the left-hand side of the table. And so if you've watched those lessons, you'll know that um, when you are looking at that one, then you, you, to see if the water is gonna, is gonna win, you have to use this water over here. This is the water that we use in grade 12 on the left-hand side of the table. Um, remember, I have showed this in previous videos. And then if you are on the right-hand side of the table, then there is a water that we use, but that's way further down on the table, okay? So I have shown that in previous lessons. So to see who wins over here, you literally just look at the arrow, and we can see that as you go down, it becomes stronger, increasing strength, okay? So that means that the water is actually going to win. So over here, water is gonna react according to this reaction. So a lot of learners would have gotten that wrong. They would have just gone and used the, the Na because they didn't realize that this one is a aqueous solution, okay? The concentrated part only affects the, if you've watched my video where I explain aqueous solutions, the concentrated part is only gonna affect the Cl minus if they ever asked us about that. Um, but I don't think they're going to. So it says that, um, let's go just write this down. But what's important is the aqueous part. It means that there is water present. They didn't say molten. Okay, and that's gonna give us H2 which is a gas, plus two OH minus. Okay, this question says, write down the direction in which the electrons flow in the external circuit, which is this one over here. All right, so let's just see what's happening here. We know that here, we are converting from Cl minus to Cl2, 
And then at this electrode, we just worked out that the reaction was, um, I've just written it down here, 2H2O plus two electrons. Uh, let's just write this better, 2H2O plus two electrons uh, gives us hydrogen plus two OH minus. And then let's just go right down this one. Just be careful, we are going from Cl minus to Cl2. So we are going from Cl minus to Cl2. So we're gonna write it starting with this part and then we're gonna write this part as the product. Okay, so now by analyzing this, we will be able to get an idea of whether the electrons are gonna go this way or whether the electrons are gonna go this way. So listen up carefully. So if you look at this reaction over here, it says that the two Cl minus, which we know is floating around here, is gonna be converted into Cl2, which goes off as a gas, and there will also be two electrons. So that means two electrons are gonna be released on this side. Those two electrons are then gonna travel through this wire to this other side over here, where they will then be used up over there. So it says that there will be two H2O molecules, which is floating around in the water over here. It'll then take those two electrons, which are coming over here, and it will convert those two things into that. So the electrons are going from X to Y. So we're gonna say X to Y. Okay, this question says, what is the balanced equation for the overall reaction that takes place? Okay, so what we do now is we take uh, these two reactions that we have, and we just make sure that the electrons are the same, first of all, yes they are, which is great. And now we just add the two reactions together. So you just put an arrow. Now everything that's on the left of the arrow, you can put together, so that's gonna be 2H2O plus 2E minus plus 2Cl minus. Okay, and then you put everything that's on the right of the arrow. So this, this, and this, and this. So that's H2 plus 2OH minus plus Cl2 plus 2E minus. And now these two um, would cancel out, and that's what we want, and there's your final answer. Whoops, take away that plus. This question um, over here says, how will the pH of the electrolyte, which is the solution, change? Now, let's just go get our reaction that we got now. Um, the overall reaction we said was 2H2O, the reaction after we balanced it. So it's 2H2O uh, plus 2Cl minus gives us hydrogen plus 2OH minus uh, plus Cl2. So, Whenever we talk about pH, we need to think about the two main components, which is H3O plus and OH minus. So when you have a lot of this, so when this one goes up, your pH goes down. Because remember, this is what acids make. Whenever acids ionize in water, they produce um, H3O plus. And so when that amount goes up, the pH goes down because acids have a low pH. When this amount goes up, your pH goes up. Okay, because OH minus is what? Bases produce. So what we can see in the product, if you look on the right hand side, there's a product. There are OH minuses. So as this reaction is going, the OH minus concentration is going up. So what would happen to the pH? It would increase. And then our reason would be um, that the OH minus concentration is increasing, or let's say increasing.